All right, guys, uh, y'all there? I hope you are. So just checking. All right, I'm going to show you guys around the room real quick. We're, we're about ready to get started. There's still some people getting drinks. I don't blame them. So hold on, hold on. Hopefully I don't move too fast. Hey, guys, how's everybody going? Uh, so right now we are live. Uh, around the globe, there's people that are going to be tuning in. So uh, if you see me walking around, I'm just actually kind of testing the camera out because me and this guy don't get along too well. <laughs> but, all right, everybody. So uh, I'm Justin Barber. I flew in from across the country to come and speak to you. And uh, I'm going to speak on, an, I don't know yet. We're going to figure that out in just a minute. <laughs> but until then, uh, I'm going to hand it over to Nihon Koden, the sponsors of today's event. Nihon Koden is the original inventor of the pulse oximetry, which you guys are all very familiar with. So uh, they have some fantastic new products. And I haven't done them on my channel yet, but I will soon enough, soon enough. But uh, I'm going to allow them to say some things. You guys, here you go. Thanks, Justin. Um, does it follow this? Oh, wow, <laughs> yeah, that's cool. <laughs> that's really cool. So hey, guys, uh, my name is Tommy Hyun. I'm with Neon Coden. I'm here with uh, Ernesto Parada and Dean Dorman. And the three of us cover New England for Neon Coden. And um, thank you for allowing us to be a part of your event. Um, we're very appreciative of, of that. And I think uh, just for purposes of tonight, this is a, you know, a big social gathering, so don't feel like you have to come to our booth or anything. But what I would say, I welcome you to learn more about us. Just We have our business cards over there. Grab our business cards and um, shoot us an email. And basically, my job is to educate people on why it is that we're the number one growing patient monitoring company in this country and um, all the benefits that you as a biomed clinical engineering uh, in that role, as well as the, the patients that are on the receiving end of these devices that are helping the clinicians to take care of them. So I, um, I definitely welcome you guys to come by, say hi, grab a card, and you know, we'll uh, set some time at a later point to talk, to educate you guys more about who, who Neon Coden is and why we're doing so well. So thank you guys for having us. Awesome. Thank you very much. You don't have to put it right up to your face. It, it can hear you, trust me. <laughs> Perfect. Hi, everyone. I'm Ashley O'Mara. I am the president of Nesky. Thank you all for coming. And we always host this event in May in person to really celebrate the HTM profession. So I want to take a moment just to thank everybody that's in the room with me and out there on the web. Thank you for what you do every day. Um, you are essential. I had mugs made for my team, and on the back of them says, never forget the difference that you make. I think every day we don't realize the difference that we make. You all matter. Yes, we're administrative, but you're also clinical, and you're such a key piece to the mission at your medical center's healthcare organization. So again, never forget the difference that you make. You are important, and hospitals would not function without you all. So. I hope everybody has a great night, and I am happy to turn it over to Justin Barber. All right, excellent. Check, check. Okay, guys. Well, um, first off, let's find out what you guys want to talk about. <laughs> so the reason I, I have to ask you is because I originally invented this, this presentation on self-marketing, because it's one thing that I know I'm really good at. I mean, in other words, some of you guys probably never would have heard of me. Uh, but the thing is, while I gave that presentation in South Carolina just two weeks ago, everybody was fascinated with the presentation because of the graphics that were behind it. And I understand we don't have a projector so that you guys can see it. Um, but So I spent the next 40 minutes of my time talking about AI and all the things it can do for you. And some of the people already implemented some of that stuff, which is really cool. I've seen it on their, on their social media. So I want to see, do you guys want to talk about self-marketing or would you rather talk about AI as a tool, all right? So let's show of hands. Who wants to talk about self-marketing? And who wants to talk about AI as a tool? All right. You heard it, guys. <laughs> all right, so it's a good thing I came very well prepared for this. So AI is moving so quickly that if I would have wrote this two weeks ago, I would have had to throw almost the entire speech out because there is a new AI that has just come out just this week. So I'm in the middle of the night, I'm, I'm testing out features and checking stuff, and, and 
holy cow, it, if I look like I'm extremely tired, it's because it, this stuff is moving so quickly that I can't even keep up. So this, is, this video is going to be live for hopefully forever, and people are probably going to be laughing about it in the future because, oh, that was nothing. <laughs> it's moving that quick. I swear to God. Like, it, it's so, so advanced now that it can talk to you like a person. It can reason with you. It can make jokes. It can understand your facial expressions, and it knows if you're sad, if you are wearing a hat. It knows if you're dressed appropriately for the occasion that you tell it that you're going to participate in. It knows all of that based on the latest version. And it can also draw images. It can do a whole bunch of stuff. So with that being said, um, guys, I'm going to, hopefully this is going to work. Uh, let's do this. All right, so let's, let's talk about AI. This is a live stream, guys. So if you want to see the graphics as they pop up, you can just load it up on your phone. It's a live stream. You can just, you can just pop it up, right? And uh, so AI as a force multiplier, there's tasks that you do every single day that you could give to a machine, and it can do it better, faster, and more accurately. How crazy is that? The hard part is, is this is such a new technology, and it's moving so quickly that we can't even comprehend how useful it is. That's why like, these type of demonstrations are going to be essential. And today, this is going to be an interactive thing, right? Because I never know what it's going to provide. It, last time I did it in South Carolina, it drew some crazy stuff up on the board, and I had to apologize. I swear to God. <laughs> it's, it's like that. So um, every single graphic that are going to be on here, oh, 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 hold on, hold on. We can do better. All right, better. Uh, every graphic that's on here was actually generated by a computer using a word prompt, right? And that's just the graphics. I, all have, I have spreadsheets. I have software that I wrote. I haven't touched software in 25 years. Holy cow. Since Turbo Pascal, if you guys ever know that programming language. That's like way back. That's, so uh, that's the last time I wrote code. But I wrote code this week. I just made a release a couple days ago. Um, and and we'll, we'll talk about that. So what is artificial intelligence? I, I do believe that this definition is going to change. But AI, it can analyze large quantities of data while recognizing patterns. And it makes decisions and it judges outcomes. That's just it. So when people, AI is like a buzzword. And, and you know, I didn't mean to make something because it's a buzzword. It's because it's fascinating. That's why I do it. But when somebody says, hey, this thing has AI, like my phone has AI. It's because it can make decisions, and it doesn't need your input. Or if you do give it some input, it knows that you're wrong. And what it's going to do is it's going to provide an option and be like, hey, did you really intend this? And it gives you an output. We never had that before. It used to be you had to tell it this, and if you didn't tell it what you wanted, you got bad output. You, you hear garbage in, garbage out. We've all heard that. That's not what AI is about. Garbage in, and it thinks about what your intentions are, and it produces an out. And the outs are pretty crazy. Every single one of these images is an output. So one of the coolest things about AI is that it can be a tutor. Now, uh, I have a son who is such a pain in the butt to teach. However, he loves interacting with computers, and he talks to my computer, believe it or not. He, he asks now to talk to my phone because the new AI talks to you like a person, and he loves that unfortunately. But you can also use it to train your biomeds. And we're going to do some demos on that real quickly. So um, this is going to come later, but I'm going to do a demo with my phone using ChatGPT. This is version 4.0. We'll talk about that later. It has this new feature that was just released this week where it talks to you. All right. So if you thought that Siri was an AI, you were seriously misled. Siri was pre-programmed responses, and it was extremely limited. This, you really don't know what it can do for you, because he'll kind of tell you and then give, maybe give you ideas or whatnot. But uh, let's talk about being a tutor. So I just tap the little headphones button, comes up. Are you listening to me? It sounds like you might be describing a symbol or an emoji. Are you referring to an icon or a specific image that includes headphones and a thumbs up? No, no, no. I'm not talking about that at all. I'm just explaining what AI is to the crowd. Got it. 
So you're giving a talk or presentation about AI. How can I help you with that? First off, I would like to use AI as a tutor, and I'm trying to figure out how to calculate the area of a triangle. Sure, I'd be happy to help. The area of a triangle can be calculated using the formula. Text area equals frac 1, 2 times text base times text height. Do you have specific values for the base and height that you'd like to use, or are you looking for a general explanation? Cancel. Thank you. I'm not going to go into it any further. The cool thing is when you cancel it, here's the difference about ChatGPT specifically. It saves your chat. Right? So let's say you're learning about a certain topic. Now, the other day I gave a presentation where I talked about the electrical safety standards for medical equipment, something that most biomeds would get wrong. I promise you, they'll get it wrong. Or you tell them, like, hey, what version of NFPA 99 are you using? They don't know what year. Well, if you don't know a year, then you definitely might not know your standards. It talks about that in detail, which is crazy. And you can go back to it at any time by going through your prior chats. Again, we'll talk about that later. But you can use it as a tutor to learn things. And kids, they just adapt so quickly to it. And like my son, he's, like I said, he's a pain in the butt to teach. But because he's interacting with a computer and he knows it's a computer, he's willing to put extra effort into it, which is really kind of crazy. So for special needs, it's fantastic. My son is a nut. <laughs> Accelerated learning. If your kid or you are a technician that is learning faster than those around you, you can use that as a tool to accelerate your own learning. If there is a certain topic that you only barely touched on in school, but you want more information, it'll actually develop entire chapters worth of material that you can study up on. Either read it or it will talk to you. It will talk to you about what the concept is. So if you say, I don't really understand what that means, what, what do you really think that is? And it will say, well, if you think about it, like a ball going around the sun, and it, it, it talks to you like a teacher would, which is crazy because it relates the age of the user. It knows by the facial expressions, by the size of the person. Generally, it can figure out how old you are, how experienced you are, and it might even ask you, like, at what level do you want to know this information, engineer level or child's level? You can tell it that. I tell, tell me how to calculate the size of the sun as if I was a child, and it will do it. Just like that. It's wild. So it adapts to your learning style, so this whole thing that we've had for all these years about I learn differently than everybody else. Well, it teaches differently. So AI as a uh, adaptive tutor, it also teaches new concepts, things that nobody else is talking about. Because it reads research reports and stuff, stuff that's not even present. Like you Google certain topics, you won't find it. But it can talk about it because someplace out there is material that it is currently reading that we don't even have access to. It's kind of cool. I, I give a demonstration on that as well. AI can summarize complex documents. This is extremely useful for every single one of us. In fact, I have a demo of it. Let's see. Let me, let me load up this. Let's do screen share for the, for the folks. OK, so this is ChatGPT as it's set up. On the left-hand side, these are all previous chats, things that I have talked about. It's code that I've generated, it's images I've generated, and it's, it's archived. Like, I can go back to it at any time if I want to. Down here at the bottom is this fancy little paper clip. If you click on it, you can upload a document, and it will analyze that document. It could be an image, it could be a spreadsheet. We'll talk about that in a minute. It could also be a very complex document. So what I'm going to load up is going to be, how about something extremely boring? Uh, let's do Eaton white paper on electrical safety standards. Eaton is, uh, what, the, one of the largest producers of power strips and stuff? Like, they, they make triple eight and whatnot. They pr produce some really good material, though. Maybe you don't have time to read through the seven pages worth of stuff. And so I uploaded it, I attached it, and then I'm going to say, uh, can you summarize this? Now, if I seen that white paper on my phone, that text prompt that it was just talking to me, it will read it to me. So if I were to say, can you summarize this document? 
he'll, sure. Paragraph one, it talks about this. Paragraph two talks about that. It reads it to you, which is pretty wild because when you're out in the field, which usually that's when I'm using my phone, not my laptop. Oh, look at that, look at that. So that was pretty quick. This is a very complex paper on electrical safety standards according to healthcare organizations. And it just gave me 10 sentences that, that broke it all down. It's uh, operational complexity, return of investment, collaboration, hazard elimination, FPA guidelines, preventive maintenance, education, training, et cetera. That was a white paper that would have took me a very long time to read. And it just summarized everything that's in that paper. Now let's say I want specific information on one of the summary topics. Tell me more about preventive maintenance. Virtual testing. And there it goes. It actually highlights the information that was in the document and it's going to also summarize it or present it in a more digested format. Benefits of virtual testing. Cost, time efficiency, enhanced precipitation, safety, flexibility, comprehensive review. It just did that, just like that. That was a PDF, by the way. It was not a text document. PDFs are incredibly difficult to try and read. Some of them you can't search, right? Well, the cool thing about AI is it has object character recognition, OCR. If you guys are familiar with computers from back in the day, they can read documents just based on the shape of things. Well, that's what AI does. So even PDFs that we can't read, it can figure out. So let's go back into it. It can summarize documents. Data analysis. Let's talk about some spreadsheets, guys. I did this demo for a company yesterday, and it was insane. I'm really good at spreadsheets. I love spreadsheets. Anybody that's like managing biomed shops or companies, you've dealt with spreadsheets. The thing is, even if you're really good at writing formulas and maybe relating one sheet to another, you're not as fast as AI. Not a chance. So I already did this work. I imported a spreadsheet, and then I asked it, how many models? It's, it's like 2,000 items on there. It's, it's a large. So you got PCs, you've got um, what, the syringe, you got the PCAs, and you've got the regular infusion pumps. That would be really complex because they're all over in the spreadsheet. So I just said, what's the model count of each of these? Because if I'm gonna generate a quote as a company, which I'm a vice president of Phoebe Medical, um, we do quotes on stuff, jobs like this. That quote would have took me a long time if I had to separate the data, write formulas and stuff like that. So I just said, how many models are there? It says, okay, you got 899 infusion pumps, you've got like 500 PCAs, you've got 200 of these, and it outlines them all. And then I told it, okay, so a um, regular infusion pump takes 20 minutes, a PCA takes 25 minutes, uh, a PC takes 10 minutes, and uh, the PCA or the syringe, whichever one I, I forgot, I said, that one takes 25 minutes. I said, how much time is this going to cost me? It says, it's gonna cost you 466 hours. I said, okay, I have three technicians that I wanna deploy. Their pay is $31 an hour, $27 an hour, and $25.50. I said, the per diem per day is uh, $50, and lodging is $125 per day per technician. <clears throat> I said, how much is this gonna cost me? And it goes, boop, and it spits out all the data in a sheet that basically says, it's gonna cost you 26,000 some odd dollars. <laughs> and you can see it, it generated like a report. I can export that report right now, live, and I can send it off to somebody that does the official quote, and it's done. That would've took us so long, you know, to compute. And let's say all of a sudden, one of my technicians is sick. So I gotta deploy somebody that's now $32 an hour, okay? I go back into the old chat, I load it up, and I say the technician that was $31 an hour is no longer available. I'm now am gonna send a guy that's $32 an hour. What's the new figures? And it, boop, it does all the math. Here's the crazy part. I did this live for a company yesterday. It was four technicians versus three technicians. If I sent three technicians, it was gonna cost me less, right? That's what most people would think because you have to pay per diem in lodging for extra days because of that loss of productivity, it actually cost me $360 more. And it does that math, it just says, okay, what's the cost difference between sending three technicians with this hourly rate versus four technicians at this hourly rate? And it, boop, 
<laughs> kicks out, and there you are. So, but you can actually judge your efficiency based on, I know I can do this many pumps per day, this is how much it costs me, and I wanna know what's the, how much profit am I gonna make? It says, okay, here's your costs. Here's the prices that you already gave me for the pumps and the PCAs and whatnot. It says, okay, you're, you're gonna make 37,000 some odd dollars. Done. So the cool thing is, if there's any changes, which anybody that has done quotes knows there are, you can go back into the chat and you can change it. Or you can duplicate the chat, because let's say you have another pump project. You say, instead of that other spreadsheet, we're gonna use this one. And you click on the paperclip and you attach the new sheet. Say, I wanna use this sheet instead of the old one. Kicks out the data and you have a form just like this where all your numerical figures are out. So right here it says total revenue 62,000. That's all the cost of the pumps and whatnot. Total cost $24,365. Profit 37,839. Mind you, these are all hypothetical values, okay? And lodging cost $10,080. Per diem cost 4,200. I got $14,456 in wages and total cost $28,736. Now, do you know how much time it would have took me to generate that form? And God forbid any of that data changes because then you gotta do it all over again. All I have to do is go back into the old chat, load it up, and there we are, I have it. It's crazy. And it can do it faster and better than I can. And I'm pretty good at spreadsheets. <laughs> So what do you guys think? Is that not some crazy stuff? Data analysis, you can do uh, databases, time clocks, payroll, it will automatically do your payroll. It, you can do AI with a camera watching a doorway and it knows people when they walk in the door just by the look of them and it will create a timestamp. And when they walk out the door, it, <laughs> it does another timestamp. That's how crazy it is. It recognizes people as individuals. Uh, you can do cost for profits live. You can do live inventory, which is crazy. Um, th they do live inventory. You guys ever see the Amazon stores? Like they're at airports and stuff where there's no attendant. You just literally walk in, you grab something, and then there's gates that open up and you walk out. Well, it's because when you walk in, it, you like scan a barcode and it says, hey, I'm the user, I'm the person. It's attached to my Amazon account that's on my phone. And every item it picks up, there's little cameras everywhere. And it says, boop, Apple, you know, what, $10, whatever it is. I mean, so. And it keeps track of that. It's like, no, he put the apple back. So it's, you know, plus one, minus one. Live inventory tracking. And when you walk out, it closes the cart. And that's, that's how the Amazon stores work. That was some genius stuff. We are leagues ahead of even that AI nowadays. So you can monitor your vehicle fleet. Vehicle fleets are very difficult, right? They're driving all over the place. How many miles are on each of them? How fast are people driving? I mean. I don't know about you, but I've got some nuts that work for me. Um, taxes, taxes are very difficult, to, especially if you're a business, because you know at the end of the year, there's a lot of stuff that you might or might not be taxable for. AI will give you live advice based on that tax year because it knows the tax code for that year. This is crazy. Um, and it can give you projected results. So if you say, you, know, you upload a document that says, this is what I've done so far this year, it says, well, if you continue doing as you're doing, this is your projected result for the end of the year. Or you say, hey, I've got this project, this project, and this project. If they go 100% perfect, what will be my bottom end at the end of the year? It will spit out some jibber jabber and I'm gonna make some money. All right, so it can analyze data. It's, that's what it does awesome. Here's something that nobody really considers. AI can brainstorm. How crazy is that? So AI has this ability, if, if I'll tell you what, let's, let's do it live. Let's do it live. Hey, uh, ChatGPT, I wanna brainstorm. Give me 10 ideas for how to create a new marketing campaign for my company. My company sells swimwear for the year 2024. Sure, let's brainstorm some ideas for a swimwear marketing campaign for 2024. One, sustainable swimwear campaign. Highlight eco-friendly materials and sustainable practices used in your products. Partner with environmental influencers to spread the word. Two, virtual try-on technology. I'm not going to go through his list because I'm not, I'm not, I'm just kidding guys. I'm not, I'm not really trying to sell swimwear. <laughs> but anyway, thank you. And, and, and then when I exit, it gives me all that stuff. Like, it gives me every, 
so the reason I said 2024 is because what's relevant this year is different than what it was last year, right? And two years ago, three years ago, who, who was selling swimwear during COVID, right? So if you give it what year it is and you, you say specifically, let's say back, what would be some marketing campaign ideas for swimwear back in Victoria era? It would give it to you, right? And I'm pretty sure they'd be different. But so that's just it. You can use it for brainstorming, which is crazy because we all can generate ideas, but maybe you just need that kick to get you going. It's, that's just it. And we'll talk about that in a minute too. That, that jump start for the creativity engine that's in your head. This is what it's really good at. I don't use AI to do my work, but I definitely use it for ideas and to get the work going. So you can use it for product features, design concepts, marketing ideas, process improvements is a big one. Instant outlines. This is what I use it for. So when I'm making a video, let's say I'm making a video on cardiac output. So I did an eight minute long video on cardiac output and it took me 13 hours to make eight minutes. If I had AI at the time, it would have taken me a fraction of the time. Because first, I had all the medical journals and stuff, right? I, that's where you have to start. Start with Google, right? The same way that we've always done it for uh, research papers and stuff. It's a, an absolute nightmare to go through medical journals and stuff. There's so much garbage information out there, and there's partisan information and whatnot. But AI can kind of digest it and give it to you in a better format. So I use it for outlines. If I'm going to create a video on cardiac output, I'll ask it. Like, can you generate me, um, well, my speech that I did in South Carolina. I said, generate me an outline for a speech on self-marketing that's going to last about one hour. And it says, sure. <laughs> he always says it in his happy little voice. Here, do, 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 and it, it kicks out an outline. So now you have certain topic areas. I threw out a lot of them, right? Because, you know, maybe it's not relevant to us. But he had some really good ideas. First thing, define what it is, what, what is self-marketing? I didn't come up with that. I was just gonna start talking about self-marketing because I assumed that everybody knew what it was. But he told me first step one, define what it is. Which, if you know, when I started with AI, first thing I did is I defined what is AI. That was an idea from the computer. So from there, uh, I, I use it for speeches to write an outline. I use it for articles, reports, books, and social media. So if there's a topic you want to talk about, you can use it to come up with an outline for maybe an article you want to write. Because there's certain key points that maybe you're going to forget one of those key points. It happens. I mean, shoot, I know I've done it. But use the outline to get you going and throw out the stuff that you don't really want. Because really, if we were going to talk about self-marketing, the one thing that I was going to tell you guys is that people buy into what they relate to. That's the number one thing. Well, the reason I tell everybody to use it for outlines only is because there's that little piece of humanity that we all recognize. If you ever read something that was written by AI, you're like, wait a minute. That just sounds weird, right? It sounds cold. It sounds scripted. It sounds synthetic. But by just doing an outline and then adding your own personal experience into it, people are going to buy into it because they can relate to it because you're a person Usually, if you're writing an article, especially about medical technology, you're, you're writing it to other medical technology people, right? We all relate on the same level. If a computer writes that speech or that book or that article, you're going to know. You're going to be like, wait a minute, what, who, who wrote this? You're going to see it. And that's, that's a humanity part of any component that you have to add into it. And that's why I only do it for outlines. I use it for ideas. I've done it for reports. Um, I've done it for social media posts. You know, let's say that there's something new that just happened. I'll, I'll ask it to give me an outline for this. Mind you, uh, I said earlier, I, I told it to give me an outline for an hour long speech. If I have a 10 minute speech, you bet you the outline's gonna be vastly different, okay? Because it, as you've seen earlier, it can summarize things, right? So it's going to summarize things according to what should take an hour or what should take five minutes. So specificity, is your obligation when you, when you interact with AI. Writing code. I talked about this earlier. Writing code is better this week than it was last week. I know, because I wrote the code. Um, so here's the crazy thing. I, as I already explained, I haven't wrote code in 25 years. Holy cow. I'm 43 years old, guys. It's, 
It's been a while. So um, I, I had this concept. I wanted a news aggregate, right? Like there's so much garbage information out there. If you Google certain things, you're going to get so much garbage information. You're going to get a lot of adverts. You're going to get stuff that's not really relevant. It's a huge waste of time. So I created a program that actually searches all the world's news and you can either give it certain keywords or you can do a default search and it will search healthcare technology, medical equipment, medical device, doctors, healthcare, you know, certain keywords. And this is the app. It does it in Python script. And yeah, I had to sit there and play around with it. So it gives me all the results for the last 30 days, so it's constantly updating itself. So tomorrow it's gonna to be different than what I, I, I draw up today. And it, like the first one up there is, well, I'm not gonna read that. <laughs> it's, it's the second one says, Change Healthcare finally admits it paid ransomware hackers. That's an article from some state, some place, I, I didn't know about that, but maybe you find it interesting. So I had to kind of tell it what I was looking for. And you have to tell it things like, I want to be able to scroll through it with my mouse wheel. You have to tell it, like every little detail of what you want. I want it to be buttons. I want them to highlight when I mouse over. So it's going to generate code. You're going to look at it and you're going to be like, nah, that's not what I want. And then you tell it. It's a conversation, right? Because it's a conversation, you can nitpick about the details in it. And it's always happy about it too. It's like, sure, I can do that for you. <laughs> it just generates the code again. <clears throat> and now I have an app. It took me about one day to develop. And it's, I don't know, 140, 150 lines of code that I never would have been able to write. And it searches the entire world's uh, internet for news. And I can even type in keywords not healthcare related and it will search for that news as well. It didn't exist last week, but it does now. Anyway, um, so it can write code. It can do spreadsheets. Uh, spreadsheets have code embedded in them. If you have macro enabled spreadsheets, they can do magical things. Um, you can write apps, you can write programs and you can write complex formulas because maybe you use the formulas in an app, maybe you don't. Maybe you're going to put it on a whiteboard and do the old school way. I don't know, but it can write formulas for you. Project management, here's a cool one. We all have projects, right? In order to be a project manager, listen to this list of requirements. This is kind of crazy. You draft timelines, task automation, data analysis, risk management, resource management, communications and collaboration, Quality control, customer management, document management, and decision support. Do you know of a project manager that can do all that well? Not. <laughs> Not too many. All right, maybe somebody is a horrible organized person. Maybe they don't communicate well. Maybe uh, they're very bad at managing their resources. AI can do all of that. And, and we're just kind of in the beginning of it. But eventually, project management is going to be an AI thing. I guarantee it. Because... Uh, we see all these ecosystems where people can communicate through one central hub. Well, that's going to be an AI hub, I promise you. In the future, all projects are going to be through some sort of AI hub because it can manage all your documents, it can make sure that people are communicating on the same basis, and it can even correct grammar. It can, if you say, like, let's meet at 11 o'clock, it's going to say, hey, did you want me to set a meeting for 11 o'clock? It's going to ask you that just because you mentioned it in a speech. So project management is something that's going to happen. Create logos. Now, logos are one of those things that are normally when you have somebody make them, they're very expensive. It's, it's kind of odd. So they're very expensive because you have to buy the rights to them. It's not, it's not just buying the image. You have to buy the rights to it. And that can get very expensive. And what if you don't like the output? You have only so many tries, and then, you know, because you pay either per hour or per try. So let's say they create a circle with a, a check mark in it. No, I don't like that one. So that's one of your tries. You only get five tries. And then, you know, it's another hundred bucks. Or I could say, generate me 100 logos of a circle with a symbol in the middle for my company, which is a dental company. You know, boop, 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 and it gives me 100 image examples. And I can pick which ones I like and which ones I don't. And I can integrate features from one image to the next and combine them. I just say, I really like this image and I like this from that image, can you put them together? And it does it. Yeah, go ahead. Do you think AI will eventually take over like, our type of job? Holy cow, that, I need another beer. <laughs> <laughs> like device? Absolutely not. Is there some stuff that is going to take over? Yes. That's just gonna happen everywhere. 
Um, I do think there's going to be some IT functionality that is going to take over, guaranteed, because it is IT. I mean, <laughs> all it is is a, a version of granting a certain amount of permissions to it. I believe that eventually a lot of IT functionality is going to be AI, because it can monitor the networks live, and it can implement things as they happen. Um, humans, they have to clock in in the morning and then drink their coffee and then implement something, right? Maybe. So it's just the way it is. I don't know. I'm talking to you guys, you, you IT people. <laughs> but uh, so it, it, you know, the thing is, biomeds, people are always going to have to fix things, all right? Things are always going to break. Think about most of the malfunctions that you guys experience. Most of them are user problems, right? That doesn't mean that a lot of your functionality can't be eventually taken over by AI. Let's say work order documentation. I promise you, work order documentation in the next 10 years is going to be AI driven. How many people have really garbage work order notes? Garbage, garbage work order notes. With AI, you're going to probably be able to take a photo of a part. It's going to relate to what that part is, and it's going to compute that to the work order automatically. We're almost there right now. Like I, with AI, I could take a photo of something and it can tell me how much that part costs. Now you'd have to write some sort of code that says I want this you know, removed from my, my inventory level, but we're almost there right now. So we're really close. Your documentation, trust me, oh, I hope I'm a biomed on that day. Because <laughs> so many people write like PM complete. Well, what'd you do? Well, AI could tell you, step one, you did this, check, you know, step two. And it can write that out. Oh, you experienced an error on this. We're getting so close to having analyzers talk to the computer. Many of them do currently, kind of, with Bluetooth. Imagine it's at Gen 1 right now. Gen 2, Gen 3, we're going to have systems that are automatically doing tests. So you're going to hook it up, and it's just going to kind of do its thing. We're still going to be there because we still have to physically examine things. There's, there's, the computer still isn't going to be able to figure out if something's abnormal by, by observing. You know, as I said, most errors are relevant to the user. We see how the users are using the equipment. I try and correct my users on the spot when I see it. AI is probably never going to be able to do that, right? Since that's a majority of the problems, it's not going to be able to take over that, at least not right now, okay? So you feel safe on that. Now, if you're in the IT space, if you are in the, uh, let's say, the design space, yeah, if I was a graphics artist, I would be very worried right now. Very worried, because we can replace them today. So, complex image creation. This is the one that almost got me in trouble in South Carolina. Okay, all right. So complex image creation. Ah, uh, let's flip this guy over here. Let's close my program. Okay, so ChatGPT, one of the coolest things that it can do is it can create images. This is where I need interaction from you guys. So. Let's create an image. Oh, gosh. All right, all right. First, remember, you have to tell it what you're looking for. I'm looking for a 1920 by 1080 image, uh, Emmerger <laughs> image of, okay, what, what, what are we going to do? What, what, what's the first component of the image? Two metallic surfaces in close proximity. Okay. Stop there, because I can't type that fast. <laughs> of, of two, M, uh, um, robots. What are they doing? What are the two robots doing? Fixing cars. They're, they're what? Fixing cars. They're fixing cars. While they're eating ice cream. I don't know why they eat ice cream, but they are. Well, because maybe there's an image that already exists of robots fixing cars, and people are, they call foul. So that's why I, I throw something crazy out there, is because they're like, wait a minute, there's no way that exists. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's, it's thinking about it, it's like, wait, you guys are crazy. <laughs> However, it's going to generate an image at the resolution I specified, and hopefully it's two robots that are shiny that are fixing cars while eating ice cream. Oh, here, let me screen share so everybody can see it. 
So uh, this is what it came up with. It's two robots in a mechanic shop, and they're eating ice cream. Here's the crazy part. We didn't have this functionality before. Let's say I don't like the cars, because those look like Teslas. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> There's an image editing tool up here. I click on it, and I highlight the area of the image I want to change. Those look like cool cars, though. I'm kind of sad that I'm going to mess this up. All right. And we can change what part of the image we don't like. I don't like the type of ice cream. Maybe I want him, well, that does look like mint chocolate chip, so ignore that. But uh, maybe I don't want uh, that type of soda can or something. You can change any aspect of this image. It will recognize it, and it will put what you request. So uh, I want, let's see, I can't type. I want different cars. What's that? It doesn't, but I asked for it. It's going to think I'm, uh, I'm, I'm just an idiot, <laughs> which it wouldn't be wrong, but hey. So I, I just said, hey, I, I just want two different cars. It's probably going to give me like Model T's or something just for irony. But it's going to change what cars are in the background because I asked it to. Justin, you got to change robots to nurses. Oh, come on. <laughs> Look at it. It did. It changed the two cars to two different cars. And let's say I don't like this image at all. There's a little button of two arrows kind of going around in a circle. It means regenerate, which means I don't like this at all. Nah, you get, uh, let's, let's do it again. So it's going to create a whole new image. Here's the thing. You are just seeing a 3D image here. We can change this according to a style. Let's say I want this to be in the style of Salvador Dali, or I want this to be a Rembrandt. Or I want this to be a pencil sketch. It can change the style of the, let's, I'm going to change it to a cartoon. We can change it to a cartoon. It's almost done. Oh, 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 oh. OK, well, they changed it. And let's put this as, uh, can you make this a cartoon? Yeah, go ahead. I got you. I got you. We're good. So I've never given this speech before, so who knows where this can go. This, I, on this alone, when I was in South Carolina, they really wanted to test me. This one dude, he said, make Arnold Schwarzenegger riding a bike in Paris. And I said, gosh darn it, I don't even know how to spell Schwarzenegger. <laughs> but but it, I, I completely misspelled it. It fixed it because it knew what I intended. And it, it generated the image. And I said, no, but he's eating ice cream. Why? Because I love ice cream. But, and there you go. Two robots fixing cars as a cartoon. So, there you go. So, uh, that is image generation. It's very good at that. So now that you can generate images, what can you do from there? Story creation. And this is where it gets crazy. Let's say that one picture of two robots, I can, I can make it either write a story about the photo, or I can ask it a story based on specifics, like give me a character, give me his name, what type of character is he? And it will write a whole story about that. Is, he rescues a, a girl from a burning car or whatever. It will write a whole story on that, and I can tell it how many pages I want. If I want a short story, one page, it'll do one page. If I want 20 pages, geez, I don't know what he's going to write, but it's going to be 20 pages long. And then I can ask, make me 20 pages of artwork that associates with that photo. And it basically creates a children's book on the spot. And when you know it, to this day, I do that almost every single night with my kids. I have them. You, you guys remember, like, back in the day, we had, like, the books of ad libs. You're, like, like, describing word, a noun, and all that craziness. We're at a whole new level, <laughs> right? Because my kids, have, they have some crazy ideas, right? And it creates a whole story and it gives me the artwork based on it. And then maybe I don't like that artwork, and we regenerate it, but it can do it, OK? And the other thing, AI is mobile. All right, so here's the one thing that I haven't shared with you guys. Is, uh, this is one of the newer phones. Uh, sorry, guys, I just disconnected you. I'm running out of time, though. So on the newer phones, it has AI kind of built into it, right? So it's a feature, but it's built in. I can take a photo of all you guys, and I can remove either certain people from the image 
like right now, or I can put, I can move you guys, and I can make you guys sit in here with this phone. It's kind of crazy. I can even scale you larger or smaller. So I've got a year and a half year old daughter, and I thought it was funny playing around with this, like we're sitting there on a bench in a park, and I make her bigger than my other kids, right? And it looks fantastic. It looks perfect. And that's the crazy thing. It's, it's now built in the phones. And now you guys have seen ChatGPT. It's now on there as well, which when I got this, I didn't have ChatGPT, but you can see we're moving that quickly. Now here's something that I haven't told you guys. Have you guys ever used Google Lens? It's something that every single one of you can have on your phone today, and it's been, it's been out for a couple of years. So Google Lens is a super cool program because you can tell it to look for something. Let's, let's look for this camera. Camera, looking at a camera. <laughs> okay. And instantly it pops up what the camera is, where I can buy it, what price it is. Now the cool thing, as a biomed, I had a uh, centrifuge. And there was a uh, door detect switch that is right on a metal strip in the front. And they don't sell that switch alone. However, they do sell the entire assembly, the metal assembly. I don't want the metal. The metal didn't break, just the switch. So anyway, I, I, I took the switch off. I stuck it on a countertop, and I took a photo with Google Lens, and it found the switch for $3.16, and that switch belongs to a Samsung dryer. Okay? It's a door detect switch on a Samsung dryer. And, and, because think about it. They don't invent these parts. They use off-the-shelf components. We just don't know where they source them from. Well, using AI, we can source things. And even now, PCB recognition, let's say you have a board. You don't know what it is. It takes certain components, their layout, it identifies that's a heat sink, that's a transformer, and it's this color, this size, this scale, and it can detect where that board came from. Like that's a Steris, you know, uh, control board. It says right now they're on parts search for $316 by taking a photo of a PCB. You can do that today with Google Lens, all right? Hey, camera, I'm over here. Hey, 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 over here, come on, come on, come on. Come on. All right, guys, this, this is an AI camera, so you can see it kind of has a, a mind of its own. And uh, so anyway, guys, thanks for watching. And uh, you guys, you guys have been fantastic. So uh, I, I do have many, many more demos that I, I would love to give you guys, but as you can see, we can go down a rabbit hole. And next week, the speech is gonna be completely different than it was this week. It's just the way it is, it's moving that fast. Go ahead. So tell us about the Better Biomed channel. <laughs> oh, my, my God. workbench neighbor, Cindy, I, I told her I was going to see you. And she said, oh, I've watched his videos. They're very good. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I, would, I would not say that. So okay. So those of you who are managers, <clears throat> your BMEDs need to watch this channel. Okay. So, uh, he so, has cards. Yeah. So we will. All right. Um, so I, I, I started YouTube five and a half years ago because I get really annoyed at telling people the same thing again and again and again. So I started recording videos of it, and then I started sending it to uh, certain people in emails like, here, watch this, you're done, okay? That's your training, good luck. <laughs> so anyway, uh, some of you guys that are watching this, they know exactly what I'm talking about. But anyway, uh, eventually some universities and stuff called me and they wanted to use some of my material. So one of my first videos ever was on um, isolated power systems, line isolation monitors. And I've got, they're using that in engineering schools and stuff around the, the country. And that was just me in front of them, like a TV talking about like components. It was kind of crazy. But it has absolutely blown up. And uh, it has given me the opportunity to travel around the country and speak with people like you guys. And uh, you know, and, and also, one of the crazy things that none of us really thought about is what you do every single day affects people on the other side of the world. That's why I'm such a proponent to people getting on social media. If you see something, share it within reason, you know, because the thing is, is people across the world follow the United States very carefully. They're, they're following our social media and what, because they don't have schools for biomed, right? They get our equipment and they don't know what to do with it. There are literally piles of our equipment sitting over in, in these countries on the other side of the world. I'm talking South America, I got, I got some people that I'm helping out. I got a bunch of people down in Africa I'm helping out. I got people in the middle of the ocean, down by the Philippines and off the coast of Africa on those islands, that have reached out to me and said, hey, you know, I'm looking for this, or can you help me with that? So these people from around the world are looking to us as a source of information and guidance on their own healthcare systems. 
And each and every one of you guys has a voice. I'm hoping that you guys use it. And uh, you know, let's, let's all participate. I've already talked to us, with some people about sharing knowledge on social media. It, it's, it's an important part of this entire world. We're a skilled trade. And one of the things I always want to let people know is as a skilled trade, the day you start training in a skilled trade is a lifetime commitment. Because all skilled trades, the only way that a skilled trade continues on is through the spread of knowledge between mentor and mentee. And every one of you is a mentor in some capacity, even the people that are brand new to the career field. You are a mentor to somebody. And imagine this, there are people on the other side of the world that have no ability to learn whatsoever because they have no material. And I'm just trying to change that, all right? That's it. Okay.